Hello. It is April 24th here. It's April 25th here in, uh, in, in 2018. And you are here with us for the Positive Psychology News webinar. Today's webinar guest is Dr. Elaine O'Brien. And we will be speaking about mind and body and really our optimal functioning that can come from that. Let me do a little housekeeping and then I'll introduce Elaine and we'll get started. Everything that you'll need to know is that as you are on the webinar, you can ask questions at any point and we'll be answering, Elaine will be answering those questions in the last 20 minutes. If you're watching this on video, enjoy. And Elaine's contact information will be at the bottom of the video as well as at the end. Welcome, we are delighted to have you here. We have been having these Positive Psychology News webinar series because we have observed that some of our authors at PPND are these incredible people that we would love to have more interaction with and hear more from and learn more from. And a perfect person who we are really glad to be featuring today is Elaine O'Brien. The format of today's webinar is that for 40 minutes, Elaine and I will go back and forth on some questions. And for the remaining 20 minutes, we'll ask the questions that you've been asking. Please feel free to know that if there's a question that you're thinking that's right in line with what we're talking about, we can see the chat box. We can see the question. So we can in integrate that into our discussion. Welcome, and we're really, really delighted to see you here. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Senya. Thank you so much for um, inviting me to join in today. And hi um, for our friends on the um, line and who view later. So great to be with you. Wonderful. Elaine, I'd love to tell people a few things about you and then we'll get started. Thank you. That would be great. Um, but first, may I tell people things about you? Oh, no, you have to do that afterwards because people are just logging in and they're just saying, who is this Dr. Elaine O'Brien that I've come to see? What, what has she done in her life? So, so to start, Dr. Elaine O'Brien has a PhD in kine, kines, kinesiology and specifically the psychology of human movement. And human movement have, has been so important to us in the news and in what we've read recently. So we're especially excited to hear Elaine's views on not just one, not just another, but the range of human movement. Uh, Elaine has created a kinesiology class with positive psychology and dance fitness for allied health professional students. She's, she works with IPA on IPA's positive health and wellness leadership team. And something that I'd most like to let you know about Elaine is that in addition to having incredible clients such as Reebok, the STEP, the US Army, Brookdale Community College and Allstate Insurance, Elaine had a, logo, a local dance exercise program which used to be called Fitness with Elaine. Uh, <laughs> Elaine's produced the, the first NFL halftime show fundraiser with 200 fit dancers. So she's done these incredible things that I hope you share with us today. But something that I most want to introduce you with, when I first met Elaine a long time ago, I was speaking with her and Elaine was telling me about aerobics classes that she leads and fitness classes. And she said, you know, Senya, I have such incredible people in my class. For example, I have this 80 something year old woman and her 100 something year old mom or something like this you were describing. I thought, oh my gosh, Elaine is doing something I hadn't even thought of. So welcome. We are really, really delighted to have you here. Oh, it's, it's such an honor, as I said, Senya. And just uh, briefly, uh, Senya was my teaching assistant when I started um, the MAP program, the Masters of Applied Positive Psychology uh, program at University of Pennsylvania. So I was taking a master's at Penn after a 27-year hiatus where I was studying 27 years earlier as a master's student in psychology. So Senya was such a patient um, wonderful, encouraging teacher to me when I was really grasping um, for this really rigorous program. So I'll, I'll forever be grateful for that and for your friendship. So thank you, Sandy. I, that actually makes me think, uh, Elaine, do you have love of learning in your top five via strengths? I do, yes. <laughs> because math to be followed by a PhD, I mean, and all of the different fitness techniques and expertises that you've developed over the years. That's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Again, you, you encouraged me and also my friend, uh, Dr. Pat Hutchinson, to go for a master's. So just like by your modeling and, and friendship. So again, thank you. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic of mind-body. Awesome. Brilliant. So let's start with something that seems a little broad, but I'd just like to ground all of us in terms of your thinking. Elaine, what's the most important thing in the world? 
I think the most important thing is love and family. And um, I think that our families can also be our friends, our extended families, right? The communities that we, we um, contribute to or are a part of, um, because that really is what life is about, is people. And as Chris said, people matter. So I would say, um, if you don't have a close family, you can develop a family. And I know as an example, in my work, in my research, um, we built this beautiful positive communities through movement. And uh, for me, during hard times and good times, it's been a place to really get together and grow and learn and share with people I've really grown to love. So that would be my answer. I'd say love and family. I'm, I'm so glad you say that because I know we'll get into movement as well, but you actually believe movement and physical health is really related to what you're describing now, to love. Right. Um, I think that uh, kinesthetic learning is one of the multiple intelligences that we are graced with. And for me, as somebody who didn't really have a movement background prior to Title IX, like movement wasn't encouraged for me and many of the uh, participants in my research study where um, women had and girls had the right to, or the privilege or uh, opportunity, we'll say, to participate in sports. So um, that wasn't really ingrained in my upbringing. And I could see when I was going through um, my life that when I experienced movement, that really helped me to um, feel better, to mm -hmm. look better, feel better, do better in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you are the CEO of Lifestyle Medicine Coaching, Training, and Consulting. Would you please tell us about your work? Yes. So it's a new firm. And what I'm doing is working with some corporations and um, companies that um, consulted for AARP and then also um, some clients actually of all ages, um, I like to say shape, sizes, um, levels of ability, right? Because we need to, uh, to help people to learn to love to move. So I think that movement, um, bringing movement to people, like whether it's teaching kids in school, um, a few years ago, one thing that my, we did as a company was we went to an elementary school and some of my senior fifth dancers participated in a class with the uh, fifth graders at Spring Lake Heights Elementary School. And it was brilliant because there was this intergenerational kind of um, understanding that was built through movement and music. We played um, diverse music so that something for everybody um, per um, Ellen Langer studies, like to try and hit the sweet spots of uh, motivation, intention, and action. So um, that was uh, another thing that we did with my companies. Um, we, uh, last week, some of the ladies in my class went and we participated um, in a little performance at a memory care center. So um, after that was over, it was 20 minutes. Um, the energy in the place was off the charts. People were just so happy. And then I went back the next day and uh, the administrators were raving about this like little intervention that really lifted people up. And um, so I'm, I'm doing more speaking right now. So that's part of the company. So it's pretty diverse right now, uh, shaping as we go. And uh, again, just trying to share um, movement literacy, uh, motivation, and uh, just research and tips to help people look, feel, and do great in the world. Thank you. Well, let me kind of go a little broad and then go back in, into the work that you're doing. So to go a little broad, again, for anybody who's joined us new, we are doing a webinar with Dr. Elaine O'Brien speaking about physical and mental health and well-being. Elaine, to go a little broad, if you kind of even, even I know that we know each other from a positive psychology world, and this is the psych, positive psychology news webinar, but if you go to what the issues are, what would you say is the number one enemy for people in terms of their physical health? I think it, um, that's a really is a broad question, but I would think that it might be a lack of engagement that people really don't know what to do in their um, spare time sometimes. And I think Csikszentmihalyi High and Lefebvre, well, he talks about that in the flow theory, about how we have more flow potential, right? That sweet spot where challenge meets opportunity at work than in uh, times of leisure. So I think that the lack of engagement, sometimes we could spiral down. Um, so if we can um, engineer movement um, into our lives, right? Because our lives are so automated now that movement's been engineered out. So along with in disengagement, if we inject positive movement and activity, physical, you know, 
fitness, let's say, um, that kind of can lift people up physically and mentally. Social fitness is a phenomenon. It's a new thing. So I think those are some of the things that, um, yeah, when people are disengaged, it's, it's just really tough, right? So if you build connection, community through social fitness, that's a great thing to help overcome that. So social fitness, but also just building it into our days. Right. I think that my second choice would be, um, after engagement, would be the lack of um, physical um, movement in our days, right? So uh, Dr. Um, Steve Blair, an epidemiologist, talks about there's an epidemic of inactivity. So, right, because we sit more than ever, right? Even now, we can stretch or move or twist or give yourself a hug. And it's something I really encourage, right? If you can just get up every 20 minutes or so. Oh, I love that. Sending you give good hugs. Um, it really helps you. So I think that that lack of, of physical movement, and even um, back in the days of the Greeks, they talked about that in action leads to so many diseases, right? So if we look at movement or lack of movement and non-communicable diseases, there's a great relationship between right, heart disease, cancers, pulmonary lung disease, diabetes, right, um, obesity, and again, the epidemic of loneliness, which is another thing that social fitness really helps to lift people up to prevent. So. Is it social fitness if people on a webinar do a stretch together? Yes, let's do it. Would you lead us in one? Yes. We so, did not plan this. People on the webinar, Elaine and I did not coordinate this. But as you're moving, I'm just thinking, Elaine, this is so you please. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing you could do is like if you notice, right, if you put the crown of your head right to your sky, right, and you just push your shoulders down a little bit, you can just relax through your jaw and face. You could even just roll your shoulders back. You want to just shake it up a little bit. And then even if you just take your hands, I know it's hard to see, put them behind your back and clasp behind your back. It just opens up your chest. So one thing, if you wave to each other here and then just stretch up and then just look up and reach back here, you could feel your shoulder open. And if you want to moan, I encourage moaning, not groaning, it shouldn't hurt. And then you could just do the other side. Just feels so good, right? To lift, if you're on a keyboard, like you are now on a computer, that's a great exercise you could do. And then another thing that has really surprised me is just like if these are my feet and I just tap my toes, my students um, know this dorsiflexion. So what that does is it stretches the, um, it stretches the gastrocnemius, the calf muscle, and works the anterior muscle, the tibialis anterior, and that is responsible for our balance during the day. So anytime, so I talk about supermarket exercises, you're holding the shopping cart, you could pull back, retract, you don't, don't lean on your cart, stand really tall, erect with beautiful posture, and then um, also what you could do is just, if you're waiting online, just tap those toes side to side, up and down, and then always, again, you need eight hugs a day and 10 belly laughs. So if you can get those in, it sounds clear. But, you know, there's actually a thing, um, Senya, skin yeah. hunger that Montague talks about, right? That when people don't have that physical touch, that it causes, like, um, despair. And um, I, I once had a, a student, a beautiful student, and she was doing a stretch, and I said, could I um, please help you with this stretch? And um, she said, okay. And, and I just touched her shoulder, and she started to cry. And I, I asked her, I said, you know, what, what was going on? And she said she was a widow, and it had been so long since she had been touched. So to me, I think that, you know, there's appropriate right touch, but um, it's such an important part of well-being, right, for babies, for people of all ages, really, to be able to feel that connection with your largest organ, right, your skin, so just, uh, I know, kind of went off on a tangent there. But. Thank you so much. And look, every, all of us on the call now have, now have b blood flowing more. I mean, look, we're, we're continuing to shimmy. <laughs> You've touched on all our extremities, our toes, our arms. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you that. Thank you for joining, too, and for asking me to, to help with that. That's, that's really fun. Uh, can you tell us about how you started in this field and the field of fitness and the field of health? Yes. Um, it, was, it was quite... Um, amazing to me. I was actually doing a, 
program at Montclair State in psychology. I had a, a graduate assistantship and I was a poor student at the time and I was looking for something to supplement my income. And I saw this ad in a local paper. Um, it was called Rogers Dance Studio. They were having auditions to teach aerobics. I didn't know what aerobics was, but I was a uh, psychology major undergraduate and urban and outdoor recreation. And one of my teachers said, oh, you'd be a good aerobics instructor. And I was like, what is that? So when I saw this ad, I applied and they said, come in for an audition. And I was the worst one. I was like, these girls were amazing, beautiful dancers. I could not follow. I did not have dance background, but I guess I had um, perseverance and they thought I had a nice personality. So they said, okay, you can join this training class. So little did I know that um, my instructor, um, Jackie Rogers, was uh, with the Imperial Society of Ballroom Dancers and she had this high quality program and I trained and trained and I taught so many people like one class with one person and um, but that was in 1979 and I've been teaching since I currently teach seven classes a week um, along with my other um, things I love to do so I feel so blessed um, and I started training instructors I became an international uh, presenter I worked for the National Aerobics Championship as a coach and actually one of the things I'm most proud of is that I helped to set uh, standards and guidelines for safety um, and performance um, with the educational testing service back in the day and for what is now called the American Council on Exercise so to help um, instructors before it was like um, a thing to just to look out for safety and um, for our students and for the people who run. So um, yeah, it's been amazing uh, just from that little answering that ad. And I always feel that, um, you know, I was the worst one in the class and I felt like, boy, this, this feels so great. And if I can do this, anybody can do it. So what I did was I, um, I feel that um, when I'm teaching, I would love people to really have a great time, right? So it's organic, but also to leave um, wanting more, to get a safe, effective workout among fellowship and a welcoming environment, I think is really a key to having people. And just one more thing, um, I, I have one of my students who started with me um, over 30 years ago. So it's <laughs> miracle. And it's a miracle. And I have another girl in my class who started in her 60s. She's in her 80s and fabulous, amazing, amazing, inspiring role models and, you know, really positively determined people that uh, I get to serve in my community, right? Could you go a little more in depth on two things you mentioned? Because I've heard you speak about this before and know how much passion you have around it. Safety and stopping before you've had too much. I think both of those are things that we who want to just get to the gym and do our 20 minutes or our one hour, we don't think as much about safety or stopping before, as you say, before you've had too much. Can you give us a little more color? Right, yeah, that's such a great question, Senya. So, I mean, I think it starts with proprioception. So proprioception is the awareness of your body in space. So even now, right, whether you're sitting or standing or lying down, you can like, uh, connect with your body even more than you are now, right? You can just like lift up your heart and, you know, you can do like physiological changes that are going to manifest in emotional positive uh, changes or states for yourself. So um, in terms of like, once you know your body, um, there are things you can learn about like, like lifting techniques, right? So that will keep you safe. But in the, in let's say the gym or in a dance class, you know, even how you walk, you carry yourself with your postural alignment, right? So as an example, briefly, the crown of the head to the sky, the tall neck, right? The uh, rib cage lifted, shoulders down and in, hips aware and square, right? And even just walking your gait, your posture, your alignment, really important to the activities. Um, I was teaching, um, actually, I was a personal trainer um, for a while. And I, I really love the, the group atmosphere to me, like the communitas and getting together with people. Um, it's just, I'm always in awe, like every day, I'm in awe that I get to teach. And, um, but it was early morning, and there was this gentleman on a treadmill. And the guy was like this, I bent over, I, I don't know if you could see me because I stood up, <laughs> but I was trying to show you. He was all bent over, he's leaning on it, he was so angry, and I'm thinking, why would you bother doing this? Like, what is the benefit? It's like, for as much cardiovascular benefit, his grumpiness, right, his demeanor, the carriage has comportment, which didn't align with the benefit or value that he was trying to get from the, the movement potential, right? So I think part of it is what we bring, our attention, right? How do we um, 
how do we, again, just carry ourselves through that exercise, that, whatever it is? Have we thought about maybe what we like to do, right? What is it? There's so many activities. And one of my favorite theorists is uh, Gavin, and he talks about personality and exercise. So if you think about maybe you like to be alone, so maybe you want to go for a walk or a run, or you like nature, be outside, which I think everybody hopefully could get outside, and, and we know the benefits of green exercise. Um, are you maybe uh, somebody who's a little bit aggressive? You might like martial arts. Uh, somebody social um, might like a dance exercise uh, group class. So there are different things that you can you can raise up, and that will also um, boost your performance and your motivation um, to to leave before like to leave wanting more. I think it's really just listening to your body. So there's one scale, the Borg scale, that aligns with um with our heart rate um, zones, right? Our working heart rate zones. So if if you think about sleeping, right, as zero, you're like fast asleep, you're like just numb to the world, to 20, which is like the hardest, hardest exercise that you wanted to do. So you can like do a um, self scale. Where do you want to be on that scale? And then align. You always want to cool down at the end of your bout. But um, I think that, again, just varying intensity and just knowing your intensity but through practice is really good. Did I know that? Where do you want to align on that zero to 20? When do you want to end up at the end of your exercise? So if you're exercising, um, it's recommended that you exercise, you know, aer well, aerobics. So there's different types of exercise, right? So let's say we talk about aerobics first, like aerobics, the key to fitness, right? So exercise that's continuous and rhythmic in the presence of oxygen. So you're demanding more oxygen using the large muscle groups to um, elevate your heart rate. So generally you'd want to work between 60 to 85% of your um, maximum heart rate. So like on the Borg scale, that could be from like 120 beats to maybe up to 170 beats per minute, depending on your age, your level of conditioning, and again, what is the goal of it. So the thing is that um, with your heart rate, um, you, uh, we found that also doing intervals, right, going between high and low. Uh, so I'll do in my program as an example, I always start with a thermal warm-up to prepare the exercise uh, for the exercise that's about to follow and then um, stretch. And then um, we'll do uh, some cardiovascular, let's say dance fitness, and then maybe an, a stretch interval or rhythmic uh, weight training, which is really, really valuable to exercising with light weights um, and using lots of repetitions in excellent form is one of the best things you could do to reduce osteopenia, osteoporosis, and build your, um, your uh, strength. So it's a great thing to do for you. Uh, working balance. So balance, you know, you, if you're working balance, you'd be really low on the Borg scale, right? Because you're not really putting out that much energy, but it's more like internal. It's such an important core thing that you need. And we all need that core strength. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We're starting to have some questions come in, and we will be getting to them in about 15 minutes. So please feel free to send your questions as you're having them, and we will come to them uh, fairly soon. Uh, Elaine, I love that example of the sort of grumpy feeling of the man, but you're thinking just why? Why are you doing this anyway? It, it kind of reminds me of uh, my grandmother when she was alive. She used to bake bread, and she always told me, Sonia, you have to smile when you're making bread because your attitude will go into the bread that you're baking. <laughs> Amen to your grandma. That's brilliant, right? And everything, right? Cooking with love, right? Moving with love. So I actually started a program called Move to Love. And the reason, um, and I wrote an article in the Journal of uh, Women in Therapy for this, about this. Um, and the idea was about, um, you know, there are these boot camp programs where um, they're really hardcore based on like military style training. Well, for me, like, I don't really respond well when people yell at me. And, you know, I want to like, I want to work at an intensity where I feel challenged, moderate, but I'm, I don't want to be injured, right? I cannot afford to be injured in my, in my work because I, I need to be like fit and strong. So um, I was actually interviewed by um, my friend uh, in, in Australia last week, and she was saying her husband's continually injured in this program. And so cross training is different from like CrossFit. So cross training is using different types of exercises or movements um, in your training to reduce the risk of injury and to work different muscle groups and to alleviate boredom. But when you're working so intensely, it's just, um, I, 
I think it's different strokes for different folks. Like some people really respond and they're making a lot of money. But again, it comes to knowing yourself, listening to your strong, beautiful body and listen to it and love it and honor it. Elaine, I can tell you're so jazzed up by this work. What is it that you love the most about it? I mean, to me, it's just, I think, Communitas is one thing. So Communitas, we learned from um, a researcher, John Haidt, is when people, and Barbara Enright talks about it too, when people are moving together in rhythm, especially like to music, and it just, you become bigger than you are as an individual. So as an example, so I taught this morning, and I'm looking at, at my participants, and it's just like so uplifting to see. It's almost like you're doing a Broadway show, but you're, you're, like not risking the injury because it's safe, easy to follow and fun, right? It's con you're connecting with other people. I love it because it does reduce the risk of um, disease, right? So I've had people who have come off blood pressure medications, off depression medicine. And um, one of, I had the great privilege of studying at the University of Oslo a few years ago. Um, I took a social science summer school program with uh, Dr. Antonella Delafave, a brilliant um, medical doctor and a positive psychologist, the first positive, um, IPA positive psychology, it was the International Positive Psychology Association. So she talked um, about how there's so much pharmacology that's, that that's the first stop often, like we go to a doctor and the doctor will say, you know, take this drug or that drug instead of like, look, what are you doing? What are you moving? How are you feeling? Really feeling right inside, outside, outside, inside. And it's interesting too. Um, I went to my doctor recently for just my regular checkup and I was, uh, it was a new doctor um, for me. And I, this was my first time with her. And she, I told her about my teaching over these years. And she said to me, um, Elaine, you must have a lot of injuries. And I was like, no, actually, I really don't have any inner injuries, you know, knock wood, right? Because there, but for the grace, you know, um, but I was injured once on the flying trapeze. I popped my hamstring and um, <laughs> yeah, that was, but um, after that, it was pretty serious because I was told by an orthopedic surgeon that I only be able to, um, I would lose 25% of my, um, my hamstring strength, but through, you know, proper um, treatment, sports medicine, I'm, I'm like, I, it's barely noticeable. But I, I was really like taken aback that here's a medical professional who's, you know, kind of really just imp implying that, you know, I'm not going to be like, my joints are not going to be where they are, you know, and so it's, it's important to move through your life and move safely and well. And move to love. Move to love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are right on that. <laughs> and what's, uh, I, I'd like to uh, give us sort of two categories of questions to make sure that we cover them before we get to the audience questions. One is a little more about your philosophies and specifically about things that may have surprised you or things that you found interesting in this work. And then I would actually like to make sure we get specific. I'd like to make sure we talk about PEP, about aqua, any kind of water work, and about the specific things of, look, there's, there's aerobic, there's weightlifting, there's balance. I know you have very clear ideas on all of those, and I'd like to make sure we, we get to those as well. So to, in introduction to those, what has surprised you about this work? You've been doing this since 79. What has surprised you about it? I, I think the evolution, how um, at the beginning of the work, people didn't even know what it was. And now it's a phenomenon, right? Group fitness has really come of age. And I think that, um, again, to me, seeing the benefits um, within a safe, right, effective um, environment is the effect is um, the benefits are just off the chart. So for, in my research, what I found was that uh, participants, I identified participants who had been attending a fit dance program, right? Cardiovascular training with rhythmic um, strength training, um, balance, coordination, and flexibility training in a social fitness context. Now, just for context, this is your PhD work, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes please, please go on. Yeah. Um, so it was called around um, fit, active, um, older women and uh, fit dance and how um, this, this, uh, these fit dancers, what I did is I identified um, women who had been participating in the program for at least five years. So we had over 50 women who had been participating and who attended the program twice a week or more. So that was like a two hour commitment. We identified that they were pretty highly motivated, right? To continue in for five years. So then we did a random sampling from there. And what we did was um, Dr. Erica Tibbetts from Smith College did um, 
this, uh, I wrote the interview question she interviewed because uh, we didn't want to bias and was just astonished by the vibrancy and the uh, general overall health and the mental um, ability and acuity of these women. The thing that surprised us the most was that not only were the participants doing well, but in triangulating the study, we found that the the children of the participants were doing really, really well because their mothers were so positively self-determined. They were all volunteers. They were all contributing to their communities, to their families, to their own personal self-care and well-being. And this heightened um, uh, mot motivations to take care, like they... Um, produced a legacy effect where the, the kids were doing so much better as well. So that was just a wonderful surprise and benefit. So from physical health, the ripple effect into communities, families. Exactly. Wow. So that when we interviewed um, or surveyed the, the children of the participants, right, these, these highly motivated um, people who were really um, dedicated to uh, adhering to a, a group fitness program that the kids were doing really well, right? These grown children um, were, had mothers who were really highly positively determined. So awesome. it's really awesome. lovely. Yeah. As, as we are at the halfway point, I'm going to give out some of your contact information, which we'll also give out at the end. So first of all, people can email you at? Uh, move to love at gmail.com. And they should look for your website uh, upcoming, which we will also send out in an email. And that website will be? Elaine O'Brien, PhD at, at oh, dot com. Sorry, sorry. Dot com. <laughs> I know, I'm asking them all at the same time, all the questions at the same time. And we will email that out as well. People can reach out to you to get coaching on physical health and mental health. Is that correct? On well-being? Yes, yes. And Great. I also go to organizations and speak too. So that's been a really lovely um thing that I've been doing. I got to speak at Lisbon and for, um, for different uh, organizations. This summer, I'm actually speaking for the European conference um, with Kathy Norman. I think she's on the line. And uh, we're also lead, uh, leading a panel on positive health and uh, medicine, which is very exciting part of um, this in Canada, positive psychology. So I hope I see you soon, soon. And two other questions about uh, you and how people can reach you. you. You do work for companies. So if people are at companies and they'd like to bring you in, you do that. Great. And then a question that we uh, will answer a specific person who asked, your exercise classes, are those in a place where you can let the audience know later through a link? Are those at a place where people can actually go? There are people who are giving us comments that they'd like to go to your classes. Oh, yeah, I would love to. I, I've done a lot of um, training of, of instructors. So that's another thing um, kind of took some time doing the PhD work and the master's work. So looking forward to train up people because it's one of the best part-time jobs you could ever have in the world. It's like you're helping people, you're loving people, and you're just moving together, um, seeing people benefit. So yeah, um, I teach right now uh, in Spring Lake uh, in Spring Lake Heights and Neptune City, New Jersey. Okay, we will send that information out afterwards as well. Wouldn't that be an amazing result, Elaine, if today on April 25th, if after today, these dozens of people that are on the call, we come back to them 10 years later, and they've all taken up a part-time job <laughs> teaching something. That would be so great, because, you know, what? <laughs> I, I think that one of the things, like to your earlier question is we... You know, there are lots of facilities um, out there, but we need really great programs. And one of the things that really influenced me the most um, was when I was a, fit, a young fitness professional. And one of our speakers was uh, Dr. Ken Dykewald, who had written this book called The Age Wave. And he talked about how we need to create programs. I'm going to speak um, generally, like, uh, but he said uh, for older people because they will be us. And to me, that really hit me that, you know, I want to serve and honor um, older people. I was actually a member of the Older Women's League when I was 23 years old because I just felt we need to really um, honor people because there's this tendency for people to become invisible when you get older. And I think that's really important. So um, developing programs like for kids. Uh, I'm working right now with um, uh, one of my colleagues uh, at Neptune City Community Center, um, the recreation director to go into the school and to do some programs for the teachers as well. So yeah, lifting up, I mean, it's educational, it's uh, therapeutic, it's healing. And also we can do high performance things, help people really have high performance flourishing lives. So it's a beautiful 
uh, opportunity. If you're interested, sincerely text or call me or email me for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So four topics almost in rapid fire to make sure we get your philosophies on all of them. We'll do aqua fitness. We'll do positive aging. We'll do PEP, and then we'll do all of the varieties of, look, there's aerobic, there's weight training. What are your thoughts on those? So just start, can you tell us about your thoughts about aqua fitness? That just doesn't come up a lot with people, but I know you're really excited about it. I, I love this uh, aqua fitness. So what happened was I was teaching for a number of years and um, then I, I took this aqua uh, fitness class in a pool. It was very lovely. And our teacher quit and they were like, Elaine, you know how to teach. Why don't you teach it? So I was like, I really don't know how to teach this. It's very different. So um, what I did was I worked with an engineer and learned a lot about aqua dynamics and hydrodynamics and developed this program. And I, at the beginning, I worked with a lot of um, uh, competitive aerobic athletes who were, you know, we want to reduce the risk of injury, but really increase their um, endurance, their flexibility, and their strengths. So we did like lots of um, vertical kinds of movements, what, like moving through the water. So um, to me, aqua fitness is you're usually in chest tight water vertically, um, and by using um, levers, um, loss of inertia, um, the Coriolis factor, different things, you can really get a fantastic. Uh, workout and to me it's a great equalizer um early in my career um actually as a student um one of the things that, that was required in an occupational therapy class that changed my life was going to a physical disability unit and we had to volunteer there and we were, we were um and it was just life-changing and made me appreciate my life um we also had to work in a wheelchair right go to a mall in a wheelchair tie your arm together do different um exercises to really help to help increase our, our feelings about understanding and empathy about our, our healthy bodies and, you know, how we are all healthy. But aqua fitness tends to really be a great equalizer, right, in the water. And I just have this vision seeing, you know, people who are injured, um, military people, just like coming together in a great um, vertical fitness workout. And the cost probably is so much cheaper than it would be to give people like other kinds of treatments, you know, one hour. And my most amazing student um, in my pool class is a woman um, who came in and she ended up losing about 150 pounds and made all these beautiful positive neurological connections in her world after like some devastating, and she's 10 years later, she is such a beautiful role model for people. So it's a very miraculous way to heal and enjoy and lift up also your mental health in the water you're telling all of us to go and find a vertical water fitness class yeah, and i think there's not that many so we need to get out there and like that's another thing i would love to just be able to help people but you know again like there's a lot of facilities um that are not willing to really serve adults i just called it a pool and it's interesting to me i was very frustrated because they're like well we do a lot of children's programs which are so important but we need to serve adults as well with um you know if you have a space available bring in a program you know if you have a pool do a class thank you okay elaine what are positive exercise practices pep did you coin this term what is this term yes i did um i think i did but um i found that what happened was when i was uh, had a fellowship at temple university when i went for my phd so they asked me to teach a kinesiology class so it was a movement class so what i did was i applied uh, some of the um tools from positive psychology so we did um we, did, we took the strengths and we applied them. So we integrated some of the active constructive responding and um, the flow theory into the movement and um, communitas. So it was just a lovely marriage. And what happened was we had super um, uh, great adherence and attendance in the program. People really connected on a higher level um, within their program, which is medical allied health professionals. And then also another beautiful outcome was that just people really just like uh, made these great goals for themselves and really were supportive of each other in goals. So to me, positive exercise practices are, uh, well, exercise that's good for you, right? It's anything that you'll do, right? So if you enjoy it, it's around motivation. It's about loving yourself, taking time to exercise, exercising safely. Again, thinking of a move to love kind of a movement where you're, you know, finding something and just really savoring the moments, right? Even when you're walking down the street to carry yourself, to lift yourself up and to have alignment, right? Because people are looking at you and they, they look at you and they get, you know, impressed when they see you looking, you know, mm -hmm. strong and fit, right? No matter what your age, it's just a lovely thing. Mm -hmm. 
thing. Positive aging, your views on positive aging. So views on positive aging. So I think the one of the main things is that we want to put more um, life into our years, right? We all want to live longer, but we don't want to just live years. We want to have vitality and vibrancy and life in our years. So the things that we could do, take care of yourself, um, like the uh, participants in my study, be positively self-determined, right? To connect with other people um, is such a gift, right? To be open to the possibilities, um, to be positive, right? Barbara Fredrickson's work, work really resonates in terms of just having that beautiful positive attitude, right? To I think to spend time with people of all ages, right? Volunteering is great. I mean, for me um, personally, I, I don't understand like um, how one day you're working and then the next day you retire. You know, I, I had lost um, a friend who did that. And I, it's just to me, it should be more gradual. You know, I think that, you know, people, we need to honor people of all ages. And again, I think that um, we need to have more positive role models of people who are vibrant and aging well, because I know that when I was doing my literature review, all I could find was um, stories or research about decrements, like what was going wrong with older people. So like to be able to see now that we are coming of age, literally, you know, to recognize that, you know, older people have a lot to contribute, right? I learn something every day from my older students and, and people of all ages, but just to be open is really a beautiful thing around positive mm -hmm. aging. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, because we all are, right? Yeah. And can I just say one more thing? And um, one of my favorite stories I wrote for um, PPN was about um, the, the um, if I'm not in the obit, you know, I'll eat breakfast. Uh, that, that was a great Carl Reiner, um, HBO documentary. If you have not seen that, please see it or read my story on PPN because it's really inspiring. Talking about she was in her 80s and sadly she lost her son um, to a violent death and she took up running and she's like this amazing running runner years later inspiring um, lifting people up every day by her again by her beautiful model. We'll send out that link as well to participants, the link to your article so they can have that uh, recollection. We're gonna turn to audience questions and through those we'll also intersperse that, the last physical question that I have about aerobics and so on. But let's turn to some audience questions. Okay, an audience question is, what is one mental trick that you use or you recommend that people use when people think feel that they're losing their motivation to exercise on a consistent basis? Okay, so a mental trick, I think, is just um, stopping, take a pause, kind of assess what's going on with yourself, right? Close your eyes, get into your um, body, take a breath. Um, I think give yourself a hug, uh, talk to somebody. Um, again, motivation could be from overuse injury. If that is the case, then that's right on. You need to, like change it up right so if we look at sports man as, as a sports medicine as an example so there are different components like prog progression so building up you don't want to start too hard or too fast right um you want to have balance in your workouts or your training modalities so that you're working different kinds of muscle groups right a variety of intensities right so there are different things again within the realm of positive sports medicine that you can do that will really physiologically lift you up but a lot of it, again, is maybe to hone in on what's going on with yourself. Um, I think doing it with a smile, like your grandma said, is a really good thing. If, um, lift up your corners. It just it does kind of help you feel better, too. So, if, but, um, And I would be um, most open to answer that specifically if um, the uh, question um, giver would, wants to write me. I would be happy to talk more about that. Thank you. Thank you for offering that to them. Uh, that actually is an excellent transition to, you mentioned, look, you, you want to do something for yourself, what's going on personally, transition slowly. I'm hearing a lot in your answers of transition slowly to do, like the, your retirement comment, just make your transitions. Elaine, can you give us a sense? Like here we all are, we're listening to your webinar, we're watching it. What should we think about in terms of aerobics exercise, weight training, balance and coordination, things like stretching and yoga? Like, what should we think about in terms of our week, for example? I mean, again, it depends on your time and your availability. I mean, to me, um, cardiovascular or aerobic exercise is the key to fitness, 
Um, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends 150 minutes of moderate exercise activities a week. So that would be somewhere in the, in the Borg scale of where you're working somewhat hard, but not really being conversational, right? So there's another like the Borg scale where you're uh, measuring your own intensity and moderating it that you can, if you're talking, right, you're probably not working or training hard enough, if you can just go, whoo, you know, that's going to be good, right? So um, it's like to thine own self be true. Um, so as an example, if somebody wants to go for a walk with a friend, right? So if you're talking while you're walking, that's going to be great for your social um, ability, which I really highly recommend. But during that exercise bout or that enjoyment outside together, that walk, if you can just pump your arms, do a little power walking, you know, get the heart pump in for even like 20 seconds, then slow down, pick it up again, just do these little bursts of interval where you're kind of breathing a little heavier. That's great for you. So every day, if you can do some aerobic activity, it is the key to mental health, right? We know that there's brain derived neurotropic factor. Um, John Rady, who wrote the book Spark, talks about how we make these synaptic um, connections when we exercise or move aerobically. And to me, like dance, as an example of aerobics, is one of the best things you could do because you're varying the patterns. You, unlike running, which is like pretty repetitive movement, right? So you're like that to move, you do need brain power, but when you're doing a combination or something, right, you have to really think about that. So you're really making those vital connections. So again, I think aerobics is, to me, it's, it's life-giving. Um, strength training, again, to reduce osteopenia, osteoporosis. I've always worked with um, light weights, like um, I use right now five pound weights. People can start with one or two pounds, three, four pounds. Um, I, again, teach a, uh, seven classes a week. So for me, five pound weights in a class it's not my workout, right? But I want to model good form and execution of movement. I think that rhythmic um, strength training, and I am doing some mini videos that I am going to put on my website too. So, and I can even send you one that I took this uh, winter, uh, if that would be helpful for, you know, just, I think I did one on squats and just a couple of different moves. So I'm happy to share with our participants. So um, when you're doing rhythmic strength training, you get that cardiovascular ability plus the, the muscular strength and endurance factor. So I don't know, too, too heavy um, weights, I don't know. Balance is so important, right? Core strength, our abdominals, right? Rectus abdominals, the oblique muscles of the side, the transverse abdominals that back, keep our back strong, so important, right? To have the core strength. And even if you close your eyes and you're brushing your teeth and just image like really good uh, balance, or you can maybe, um, if you're standing waiting for your cup of tea to boil, do some tree poses from yoga. I just like to build it into your busy day so that it's there. So important. Flexibility is one another key because when we do flexibility or stretching, not only are we stretching our muscles interiorly, but we get a great benefit inside our arteries, like that subtlety, right? Because um, we want to reduce the risk of arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries as we get older. So when we do something like a stretching type of move, that's great. And again, coordination moves. I mean, it's so good for your brain to kind of mix things up. Even the hand jive, right? We can do it right now. If you slap the, um, your knees, clap this, and then here, 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 right? So if you want to try it with me, you slap, clap, scissor, and then elbows for four, three, two, one, right? So do stuff like that. It's great. And plus it looks good on the dance floor too. So, I mean, these are just things you can do, have more fun. And that's another mental tip, I think. It's like, if you have fun doing it, it just it makes it so much more compelling to continue on and come back for another day. So it sounds like you're saying people find either a local class where you're doing either dance or low weights, uh, strength exercises, or find something online, find something where you can do this, where you can keep up regularly. So yes. either of those. Got it. Got it. And I love your toothbrush example. I mean, I'm going to start doing that. Why not? It's so easy. Just balance on one foot or in another foot or even close my eyes and balance. I love that. Elaine, thank you. And even use your non-dominant hand. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, right? For things, you know, maybe not dangerous things, but occasionally, right? Do that, right? You want to get those, even like a movement like this. I know it's hard to see on the screen, but if you're crossing your body, so do this with me, you guys, if you would. So if you cross like a punch, just punch. So you have that 
cross brain connection, right? So you're stimulating the brain because you're crossing the midline of your body, right? That, uh, that plane. So different things that you can really do to amp it up. Yeah. yeah. Like that. You, you want us to do this while we're brushing our teeth or separate? Oh, it's separate. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. But I love it. Look at all the tips you're giving us just literally in our meetings. If we're having meetings and we're not on video, maybe even when we're on video with our partners. Okay. And now let's do a little crossing our body. Yeah. 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 Here are some other questions coming at you. Uh, somebody asks, how can I motivate myself to take a short walk in the morning? Oh, so what do they say? Put your sneakers by the, um, by, out, bring them out, put your clothes out and then just get up off your, and go, you've got to go. Even if you just say, I'm going to walk one block, that once you're out there, you will. I would just get like, put on something, like it's been really cold in the Northeast where I live. So I just, I would bundle up, bundle, you know, get really comfortable or wherever you are, make it so it's like really enjoyable. Notice things, maybe make it a game for yourself. What am I noticing? Or go in a different way, um, you know, where you live. So just try different little subtle tips, but I think sneakers by the, and lay out your clothes and just like, don't like no excuses, God do first. Cause that way you'll, and you'll feel so good after you do that, right? Feel so good, it sets the, the pace for a really lovely day then. Uh, another person asks, uh, have you thought about teaching online classes? Oh, what does that mean? Have you, have you thought about teaching online physical classes? Where you're, where, where you're training together online? Yes. For example, I mean, you teach seven in person, but have you considered teaching some online? Let's do that. I would love <laughs> to do that. Yes, we should do that. We did that. I want to do my courses with you. <laughs> it's a great idea. It is. I, and, and that's something I really would like to try and uh, do is like serve more people too. And again, I, I just can't believe um, how much progress and just beauty I get in, in terms of getting people moving uh, daily. So yeah, I would love to do that. So I'd love to talk more about that. Okay. Okay. Very cool. And uh, somebody saying that she does high kicks while she's grinding coffee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine's liking that. And one more question is coming up. Uh, the, it's a, a little bit preamble to the question. People gravitate towards fitness when outside, cir outside circumstances are uncontrollable or there's a lot of stress. So the question is, how can people utilize that energy of stressful or ugh, to get an excellent workout? Okay. So, so the question is that people are attracted to move when they're Okay, so let's talk about stress. So early on, I also wrote an article about stress for Positive Psychology News. And it was talking about different types of stress, right? So there's distress, right? When, like you said, when things are really going wrong, right? There's stress, which is a good stress, right? So right now, I have some stress being um, here on this. And it's so wonderful, like, to be here with you and, and to spin, right? So thank you. So that's a good stress, right? So if you're doing something... Um, and then there's uh, so distress and you stress. So when you're having the stress, if you can harness it, right, um, and just like, just kind of differentiate, right? We all have this level of arousal. Um, I think that, you know, maybe if you're feeling really bad, do some boxing moves, like a hook uppercut kind of thing, right? Um, a jab, cross jab, a knee up, we do that, you know, so different things that, um, you know, sometimes even putting music on, like to me, music often helps determine movement or predict movement. So I think that that's also a good, like, stress alleviator, you know, maybe put on, um, whatever songs you like, and then just like, let it out. Um, I recommend doing the Tarzan yell, right? So if you just pat yourself, do this with me, if you would. So even if you're like, oh, right, so that's going to reduce like, inflammation, because you're working in um, to your immune system, right? So um, that's going to be a really good thing. So if you have distress, kind of focus again, center yourself, pay attention to it, and then see how you can apply it. And I would be more happy to, to speak more specifically if anybody wants to talk to me about that. But just those are a couple tips. That person is answering such a great answer. Thank you. And they're thinking of kickboxing with music to align energy. So thank you. I love, Elaine, how just between things, your balance with a toothbrush, do this, do some cross. I mean, every, we're only seeing your head and shoulders area, but you've already given us so many things. And our toes, remember how you were saying about the toes part? Yeah. So just good. So good for you. Yeah. 
Yes. Elaine, what is, as we're rounding up and before we give your contact information, what is something else that we may not have specifically covered that you would say, okay, people really should know about this? Um, I think that people really know um, just to be able to take the time for yourself to have self-care for yourself because that way you can give to others as well, right? You can honor yourself and just really enjoy. I know for me, applying positive psychology tools with the physical fitness um, and mental fitness, right? So that we know that there's a relationship between psychosomatic, right? So with our bodies and our brains, but there's also the somatic psychic relationship, right? Between our bodies. So we can elevate our bodies with just more awareness of literacy tools, using aerobic activity, flexibility, strength, balance, um, things like yoga class, so powerful for you. But you want to, again, honor your body. Let's say you have a teacher who's like kicking over their head or the lovely lady who's grinding coffee and doing high kicks. Well, maybe you can't. So you have to honor what you can do in your best um, and just um, like try and like savor um, I also try and catch people in my class doing stuff right. You know, I think that's something earlier on in business that I try to notice when people are doing some and to honor um, the experience of that, you know. So I think to me, again, awe is a really big part of life, right? Gratitude, having gratitude for our healthy bodies and honoring them and not being so hard on ourselves, right? So my husband works in the film industry, right? And he is working with like lots of beautiful actresses. And I'll say, well, you know, Sean, how was that actress? And he's like, oh, she's pretty, but you know, she was in makeup for two hours and the, the lighting they did on her. So it's like, we see often these models of people that it's not really what it is, right? So I think that that's really important that we look at ourselves and we spread love and honor ourselves and others. And the other thing is, I think looking at people in the eye and my friend, Dr. Pat Hutchinson, who's on the, um, the line, she's an artist, beautiful, fine artist. And she just did this this series, Artivism, right, to around building up social justice. And her portraits are called Look Me in the Eye. We come or we look on screen more than we look at each other in the eyes. So even when we're moving, when we're out and about, to, to be able to engage with people on a higher uh, level, honoring them and honoring ourselves is such a beautiful thing. Let us do something for the participants. Participants, this is your active role. Please type in what you are taking away from today's call. And we'll read these as they come in. What is something you are taking away from today's call? You can type it either into the chat area to us. You can type it into the Q&A. We'll just be reading them. What did you learn from today? What are you taking away? Gradual versus radical. One person is saying being gradual in, in their fitness and starting from fitness and integrating it into their life. Oh, somebody said something really beautiful. Exercise isn't selfish. It can be an act of love. Oh, beautiful. Uh, put extra motion into everyday tasks. Thank you, it's wonderful hearing what you're learning. Oh, somebody said it reinforced their respect for Elaine. Mine too, for whoever said that, mine too. Uh, somebody was responding to the exercises and selfish, it can be an act of love. That person was saying uh, kickboxing can teach self-compassion. Uh, Elaine, it's a, say it again, Elaine, what were you saying? Thank you so much. What an honor to be with you. And it, one person said, Elaine is such a positive force for me. And they're joining you tomorrow for class. That person is coming to your class tomorrow. Awesome. And one other person is saying they're taking away to not lose even one day of doing exercise. Thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. So to round up, I want to let everybody know that you can email Elaine at move to love. That's the digit two at gmail.com. We will send you Elaine's contact info, her website that's going to be coming up, the two PPN articles that she referenced, and maybe her video. Maybe. We'll see. And maybe the video that she mentioned. And the last comment that I'll, I'll uh, read off is somebody is taking away wiggle toes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Elaine, thank you so much. This has been so physical and so mental. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was my honor. Thank you. Pleasure. 
thank you to all the attendees and we'll be in touch with you by email. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you.